sorts of reasons for playing tournaments and all sorts of variety for it. Uh, but now the set's finally ready as players are sit down uh, on the stage, and it's a one-to-one -one series at the moment with Token Druid banned away from both sides. And this is going to be a very important test for this newly minted APM Quest Priest. People look at Topsy Turvy Combo as one of the worst performing decks in Hearthstone history during the Boomsday meta. But now with the addition of Mass Hysteria, gives a much more consistent board clear early on for the Priest to potentially survive, and you add in the fact that Amara, the Warden, allows you to go up to 40 health no matter what health you are at is a very big boon to giving survivability for this deck. Yep, and so if you're new to Topsy Turvy Priest, I'm going to give you a very brief rundown of how it works. Uh, the job for Insom is to extend the game as long as possible until he's got the right tools able to combo his opponent, and, and you deliver a one-turn kill with this combo. The goal is to get multiple uh, of a particular type of minion in play, namely Radiant Elemental, and then you use... Um, why can't I remember the name of this Six. card? Okay. I'm there, looking at it I, on I the paper. It. There's Stone Tusk Spore, Radiant Elementals, <laughs> test subject. and Test Subject. And what you do is you buff the Test Subject, and then you kill it with Topsy Turvy, because when you switch a zero attack minion health and attack, it ends up killing it. And because Test Subject says return any spell you've cast on it, a lot of times when you cast Divine Spirit and you cast Vivid Nightmare, it just summons more copies of the spells, and you keep buffing your own Stone Tusk Spore with Divine Spirit to kill your opponent. The, the goal is to duplicate a particular spell. That spell being yes. uh, Divine Spirit. Multiple Divine Spirits, then you pump up that Stone Tusk Boar, you flip around its health and attack, and you get them. It, it, the reason why it's called APM Priest is a moniker to the, uh, the very um, jokingly assertion that you need fast actions per minute to pull off the combo. Uh, but it's not actually as much of a joke as it is reality. A lot of times, if you waste 10 seconds in turn, you might not be able to finish the combo. Yeah. It, you know, if your opponent has multiple taunts in play, if they have taunts that, you know, spawn taunts like Void Lord, for instance, there's basically a way to kill through any single board in Hearthstone right now uh, with Topsy Turvy Priest. It's But it's a, ma a matter oh of my. taking the actions very quickly and deliberately. That's a major factor of the deck. Yeah. Now, when you uh, factor in, well, there's two things going on. First of all, the, the POVs are switched. So Hune is actually playing the yeah, Priest, and, and Insom is playing the, the Paladin. Um, which is why, you know, you, you see that perspective being switched. The second thing is that Sohyun has plays Radiant Elemental for tempo. And it's something that he recognizes that this matchup isn't going to be dictated by me using Stone Toast Boar for maximum damage. I need to not die as soon as I can because Odd Paladin's going to be putting on as much pressure as possible to end the game. Yeah, it is, it is an interesting perspective to have. I mean, you don't necessarily need both... Um, of your Radiant Elementals to win the game, but yeah. you you do need both your Vivid Nightmares if you end up using a Radiant Elemental early on, and unless you're going to go for an alternate route to victory. You can technically outlast your opponent, um, but it's a very difficult thing to do. But against Odd Paladin, you are not really afforded the luxury of waiting around. You typically have to, to get moving in some manner and start to make some progress on board. You can't just let it get out of control, and they buff the whole thing and blow you out of the water. Speaking of buffing the whole thing, Spirit Lash would be fantastic had it not been for this boisterous bard opportunity for Insom. However, he does have ra uh, Raid Leader as well, and that is the opposite. Buff attack for more damage or buff health options, for options. better board stability. Yeah, you're looking at the tiptoe dance that many aggressive decks are going to have to do against Priest, which is figuring out how to play around Mass Hysteria, how to play around Spirit Lash, how to play around Wild Pyromancers. There's a lot of tools that Priest has that can blow you out of the water. I would say, in general, aggression is is favored in in the matchup, but there's a lot of particular tools that change the way that you're going to look at a board or change the way that you're going to play a board. And I think that's really the difficult test for the aggressive players is can they dance that dance properly? It's very difficult. Yeah. Well, I think this is a nice way to split the difference because Insom trades into the Radiant Elemental, which needs to happen, but he also eliminates his one health minions. So if he Void Rippers now, he even gets that buff, or he can use his Boisterous Bar to even be a little bit more greedy beyond that as well. Yeah, and this also, uh, you know, has some maximization potential versus uh, Mass Hysteria, where if the Raid Leader or the Firefly immediately kill another minion, well, and itself at the same time, you end up with a minion in play. It's true. You know, Mass Hysteria has a lot of instances where it can be a bad brawl, has a lot of instances where it can be um, a good brawl, and it has a lot of instances where it can be way more than that. Uh, it, it's, it's such a tough card to play around that I don't think anybody 
has found the exact formula of how to do it just yet. Yeah, Mass Hysteria is, uh, needs to specifically go in a specific order as well. Raid, Raid Leader has to attack into the Void Ripper, and then after that, the minions can attack into each other for a full clear. Yeah. If Void that doesn't happen in that order... Void Ripper could also attack up. Raid Leader. Sorry, yes. Yeah. I meant that Raid Leader and Void Ripper have to interact, yeah. but if they the Firefly first. interact... <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> hug. I, you know, it's a demon, you know. Hostacons <laughs> huggle. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's the mass hysteria for sure. Uh, disappointing. It's one of the stronger outcomes for Insom, for sure. But it's a common outcome as well. Yes. I, I think, you know, there's a pretty good chance that something like this would happen. And so with Leroy in hand, I think that Insom has the end game somewhere in sight. You know, it's develop some minions with hero power buff them up so they don't die, attack face for three, and hope you connect one or two more times. Get me out of here. Dev subject coming down. First death rattle on the chain, yeah. too. This is exactly what we're talking about. When you play the uh, the APM Priest, you are subject to the mercy of draw. You know, sometimes you just have the combo side of the deck. Sometimes you have only the quest side of the deck. The only point, the whole point of having the quest side of the deck, though, is that you could have a lot of consistency through the draws. Blood Mage Thanos and Loot Hoarders, uh, Twilight's Call to revive them over and over and progress the quest. Yeah, the main, the main big benefit of the situations is that, you know, Death Rattles are the core of your deck. And so when you have uh, the, the Priest quest and you have all your Death Rattles early, you are in a fantastic spot versus decks that, that have a linear uh, aggression chain. Yep, and also the reality is, too, that Seohyun can just finish the game through sticking, say, like, Amara, and the rest of the odd power is just stuck hero powering. So, you know, you don't need to be super dependent on this combo. Yes, one vivid nightmare is being used. Hmm. Seohyun still has it back, and I believe should have a second test subject. It does. So this is still a possibility for Seohyun just to get big damage. And you don't even, you don't even need to necessarily do, like, the one turn kill. You yeah. can also just press your opponent with like a 16 damage still does Well, I'm thinking that Blood Mage is probably going to have to get drawn pretty soon because this Fungal Mancer sets Sohyun up to, to be dead if uh, he uses Psychic Scream. And dead in, uh, you know, a a Leroy fashion instead of a Vine Cleaver um, yeah. fashion. So Sohyun here, I think, is very apt to take a risk a lot of times with Psychic Scream and go, ah, he's got to have Leroy. I don't know. I think this board says... Psychic Scream, you have two copies of them. Yeah, I, th now, that being said, I, also, I just also didn't account for what Spirit Lash actually does in this position, or really what else that Sohu can do in this position. You know, I think you can topsy your own thing here, buy back the spells you invested into it. Yeah, but you have to play uh, the spells to get to draw cards. Yep. That's just going to wrap the game in some. Wins it with Leroy Jenkins, and it just goes to show you the weakness of some of these combo decks, and if you can pressure them with Odd Paladin's strengths of just dominating the board, then that's it. And it also goes to show you the importance of things like that Mass Hysteria being able to clear the board. While it's a fantastic 5 mana spell, it does have that drawback of a lot of times, if it's not attacking the right minions, then you're at the mercy of... Yeah, it's okay, Secret apologize. Keepers, lots of secrets, uh, Subject 9. You are correct. Giddy it up. is uh, Secret Hunter. Zoljin feature at the top end. You know, the two most expensive cards in the deck, Deathstalker Rex are at six, and then Zoljin at ten. They stand alone above five mana. Everything else is five mana or less in this deck. Uh, its intent is to get extremely aggressive and keep the opponent pressured. Uh, we're looking at Blood Scalp Strategist, a three mana two four. It says if you control a weapon, you discover a spell. And a mask and two copies of Mass Contender, three mana two four. If you control a secret, get a secret from your deck and put it in play. Well, three pieces of the combo for Seohyun. It's going to sit in the oh. hand for a while. Wow. Two secrets and a spell stone followed by uh, with a secret <laughs> keeper to top it all that off. Is, this is one of the nutso hands for Insom right now. And it, oh, it, this is going to no. be a really tough test for Seohyun, uh, who early on is going to be under a massive amount of pressure. Uh, yeah. You know, this, one of the nightmare cards you see from Secret Hunter is Secret Keeper. Uh, it's almost always going to get buffed. And then, you know, the thing you're hoping for afterwards that you don't see is the Emerald Spellstone. And in this case, it's looking like it's going to be a greater Emerald Spellstone. And a lot of things here are spelling trouble for Sohyun. And I'm, I'm looking at 
needing Ooh. mass hysteria very early on, and I'm looking at needing a death rattle chain very early on to be able to to get Amara in hand. Without that, I don't think stabilization is going to be here. Yeah, it's pretty much mass hysteria. Mass hysteria was made for things like spellstone. <laughs> yeah, I think this is wise from Insom too when he picks up Eagle Horn Bow. Just go ahead and use it. Uh, Radiant Elemental is always a scary minion, and if Sohyun's this desperate to fight for pressure, fight it back. Exactly. Time is on your side because the priest needs to uh, to assemble other pieces of the combo. If they're, especially if they're not playing Loot Hoarder or Thanos on turn two. Yeah, I mean crossing that threshold where Sohyun is no longer the one under the gun is is quite a ways away here, I'd say. More spells come to the hand. Secrets here, I think. Um, either is fine. I mean, it's not like your opponent's going to be able to attack the face, but you yeah. just want to play something. I mean, your opponent's like never going to use Stone Tusk Boar here to try to clear off your Secret yeah. Keeper. So, Gosh. you know, just getting down Wandering Monster and then following it up with Ideal Traps afterwards. I don't think the Secret Order really matters in, in this position. You know, if Sohyun still had the Rain Elemental, he'd be like one Tusk subject away from just having the combo. Yeah, that's the other thing too, is when you play Radiant Elemental to actually uh, try and fight your opponent, you know, that cuts into your ability to combo. But I think that Sohyun's Woo. playing to the right position here, which is, uh, you know, try to get a Death Rattle Chain going. I think that's the most important factor. Blood Scalp Strategist comes in the hand. Yeah, not quite ideal here. It doesn't buff the Spellstone. Uh, it's important that Spellstone and Secret Keeper says whenever, you know, you play a secret. Uh, secret Keeper just says whenever anyone plays a secret. But the term play a, you know, whatever kind of thing it's going to be means spend the cost. So if that Radiant had been saved now in this position, we'd be looking at actual, I think quite literally lethal. <laughs> Assuming he had Test Subject. Yeah, yes. with, with Test Subject. He also needs the mana, though. That's the problem. And I think 8 mana is often the break point for when you can pretty much infinite combo. So with 2 Radiance and uh, the Vivid Nightmare in hand, I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, You need at least seven. 6 mana yeah, for the eight mana. Yeah, it's, it's usually 8 mana because you need 6 mana for the 2 Radiant Elementals, the Test Subject, and Stone Test Board. And then you need a copy of Test Subject once, and then you need a copy of the ra uh, Radiant Elementals. Come dance to my song. Well, oh mean, my gosh, hold it, on. Yeah, it's not far off, honestly. Well, like, the second Rain Elemental is gone. That makes a big problem. So second Vivid Nightmare is the hunt then? Second Vivid Nightmare or Shadow Visions. Which you technically can you know, duplicate that with just the test subject. You know, right. you play test subject. You then you need more mana. And yeah, it's it's a matter of mana expenditure that Sohyun, I think, is going to run into this game. You know, From a life total perspective, fairly safe. Psychic Scream in hand, fairly safe. Yep. I, I think that this is a very winnable game. Hmm. Apologies, by the way. That was Mass Contender uh, that was played, not the, the strategist. But <clears throat> in, in this spot, you can see that Insom just continuing to pressure the board and trying to play around that Spellstone possibility. It's pressuring in the correct way, too. The Spellstone being saved for reload in this spot instead of uh, being used right away. So that way, in the Psychic Scream turn, he's able to just, you know, oh pile the pressure right back on. There's so many secrets up. And for reference, there's Explosive Trap, Freezing Trap, Rat Trap, Snake Trap, and Snipe, yeah. and Venom Strike Trap, so and Wandering a, Monster. That is something that Sophie needs to navigate as well, is being able to get around uh, all know, the secrets. Yeah, which it's not that difficult to do with the deck. Uh, it's just a, a matter of understanding the sequences of uh, top seeing the, the boar around. Now, Sohyun is in big trouble. Yeah, Staring at 15 damage on board plus the hero power next turn. It's not a good spot to be. Is there even anything he can do in this spot? Did any death when I was die on his side for Twilight's Call? I don't think so. Get me out of here! Well, that's the first death rattle, so. It's like spending mana just so that he can have stuff to do. Uh, I think he's just dead. Get me out of here! 12 uncontested on board, 13, 14, 15 with the bow, 16, 17 with the hero power. So not not 100% dead, but looking quite dead. I'm trying to look at the match history, apologies, to see if this priest lost uh, game two as well, because Sohyun won with his Shutterwalk Shaman, but 
lost against the Zoo Warlock. I'm kind of wondering if this Quest Priest is going to be the reason he loses three times. Like, if he gets swept. It's one of those decks that is extremely vulnerable to exactly that. So Tracking was looking for damage here for Insom. I'm guessing at the Could be. slow pace. There's so many opportunities that's damage. Too. And that's it. Two out of three options going to wrap it up. If I'm not mistaken, Siohan loses three times with the APM Priest. And just goes to show you how difficult it is, not just in terms of execution, but in terms of how it's positioned.